folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. What do you know it? We're now in October, which is Halloween month. It started yesterday, October 1st. Last week was September, already the beginning of the fall semester and the fall season too. <laughs> yeah. Because I just reviewed the, the brand new peanut special, Lucy School. Where the Peanuts gang are a garden around to go on their brand new school that they're going to roll in. But unfortunately they were afraid and very anxious about it that Lucy decided that maybe you know, she'll find a way to teach all the Peanuts gang all the new steps of education. But then she realized it's a lot harder than she thought and she learned something about that. And the rest of them. Uh, it's a great special. I um, mean, it's on Apple TV Plus, and you can watch it along with all your favorite Peanuts game uh, specials that you'll love, as well as the movies and all of that. Well, anyway, so yes, um, I know I've been busy a lot too with other things. I mean, I will get to reviewing some horror related movies for this month as I continue even though I've been posting commercial breaks you know just to keep up hoping to gain more subs and all that I haven't even gotten around to review all the other movies that I saw this summer this year alone and I know because you know I've been so busy with a lot of errands you know we had to take care of things for, for our cousin Opa we had to take care of a lot of things for my sister, Eileen, because, you know, she finally got her license. I'm happy and very proud of her. She's now in class, you know, getting ready to, to do some more work and with her studies and all. And I know I'm busy myself, too, you know, trying to post commercial breaks on my channel and stuff. So... I know I, I wish I've done more movie reviews than ever. You know, I need to try to keep up with a lot of stuff and all these other movies that, that I have in my collection so I can watch, as well as some movies that are available on streaming. Who knows? <laughs> so that way, you know, things will get better. Okay. Uh, but with that aside, um, I am going to do a movie review today or this week. <laughs> Um, however, it's a non-horror movie. I wish it was, but mm, no. Uh, but it just came out exclusively to Disney Plus, you know, their streaming service, which has all of the movies, TV shows, originals, and a whole lot more, even Fox-related material that are available on the platform. And this premiered uh, during Disney Plus Day, September 8th, 2022. Yeah, that was last month. Uh, because they had a, uh, a free offer deal, um, which actually lowers down the price uh, with for a month to order uh, Disney Plus to sign up and you get to watch everything. Yeah, <laughs> so yes, you'll get to watch, you know, all the Marvels, as well as uh, Star Wars and Disney movies, uh, shows like animation, originals, all that. Yeah, so this would be perfect for it, including these upcoming TV shows and movies that are available. I mean, I know they did used to do the... Uh, the the Disney um, this one particular deal where they get to play yeah the the Disney premiere um, plus I think that's what it's called I'm super wrong but yeah they used to play movies theatrically that's available on streaming but it can also be played um, uh, theatrically in, in theaters so enough to get more profit and all. But I know nowadays they'll just release it theatrically before 
it will be available on streaming and even before it hits physical media and digital and all yeah that's the case and I'm sorry it's been a long time though I mean I know I'm trying to keep up the pace uh, because I have post mostly positive reviews but I have done negative reviews too and I've done mixed reviews and I've done other stuff but it's cool because there's nothing wrong with that but it's been a while since I've done a negative review and I'm sorry I was having some high hopes for this one I really was I really am and I know it's been such a mixed bag for Disney's uh, live-action remakes. I mean, sometimes they work, other times they don't. I mean, I know it's a shame because I was hoping they'll have plenty of respects to the source material, but that's not the case here, I guess. They're just using it as a cash-in. But it's Pinocchio, the live-action remake uh, from Robert Zemeckis, you know, gave us Forrest Gump, as well as um, the Polar Express, Cast Away, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, yeah, Back to the Future, you name it. Yeah, those great films. But he also had directed um, What Lies Beneath, and he also previously directed another abomination that's a live action version of a classic story by Ron Dow, you know, The Witches with Anne Hathaway playing the Grand High Witch uh, that was available as part of uh, Max Originals that's on HBO Max yeah it was a terrible remake I mean you, you just can't top the original 1990 classic with which is very dark eerie and scary um, very disturbing too with Angelica Houston and one of her wicked performances in her career I mean this would have been an Oscar calibrated performance right there consider the fact that she did have an Oscar too I think um, but yeah, she got to. This is the role that would actually made her play uh, Reticia Adams in in the live action uh, Adams Family uh, versions from the '90s, and then later she got to play um, the the stepmother in Ever After a Cinderella Story. Yeah, <laughs> great movie. Okay, and you know the story of Pinocchio since it's based on the 1940s classic which in turn is based on the Italian story by Carlardo Calati. It's a story about a wood carver named Trepetto who's about to create a new boy because we find out that he's a widower he's very lonely but he also had a son before and this wooden baronet uh, puppet uh, will soon transform by coming to life after a wishing star when a blue fairy appears and be able to grant him, you know, bravery as well as honesty and unselfishness. And this. Uh, Wise cracking, um, smart and intelligent uh, cricket will appear as his conscience, you know, to be able to teach him how to do everything exactly as told. And also, Geppetto will be able to, to meet him and, and he'll be able to teach him as well, you know, by taking him to school, um, by able to discover the entire world. And do everything he can. Everything happens. He's basically an, an outsider, but which at this rate, an outcast of his own. So he's not quite human yet, but at least he moves 
without strings. Yeah, no strings attached. <laughs> okay. But it's a very classic story. I love it. And I, there have been numerous uh, adaptations of the same story. There was the Filmation animated feature, um, which I guess they wanted to use this as a sequel to the 1940s classic. And before Disney decided to do their own sequels. Um, it was called Pinocchio Emperor... Uh, Pinocchio and the Emperor of the Nights, uh, which was a very dark, edgy animated feature. I remember seeing that when I was quite young. It's, it's been a long time since I've seen it. Um, but it's very interesting, too. And then there was the live-action version from 1996, which had Jonathan Taylor Thomas from Home Improvement, you know, who played Randy Taylor, the middle child of the Taylors. <laughs> Um, and he was, and they got the late great, uh, excellent actor from Mission Impossible, and he was in Ed Wood, and many films. Uh, Martin Landau, and he plays Geppetto. Um, it was directed by Steve Barron. Uh, I find this pretty interesting because originally. The director, you know, gave us Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Electric Dreams. He's a music video director himself. He also did Coneheads as well. Um, he was originally going to approach Disney to do a live-action remake of it, hoping that this will, will help save Disney for sure. But they refused. So instead, New Line Cinema and Savoy Pictures, along with... Uh, um, what was that company? Um, uh, yeah, Kushner and yeah, Kushner Lock Entertainment uh, would provide. Yeah, and it's a very underrated and very solid uh, adaptation that I saw, and I love that movie. And, and I'll give it to you. That's a much better film than than this new one that I'm about to review. Um, but more on that. Um, there's there's uh, other adaptations that we're getting numerously, and boy, there's so many of them. I mean, there's there's even um, Drew Carey's version of Geppetto. Yeah, he was very young to play the role in the Disney film that was on the Wonderful World of Disney. That that was on ABC, and and there have been. Um, other um, versions that we're getting to, like we had the Roberto Benini's uh, version of Pinocchio that's in live action form. Um, in the in the English version, it was dubbed by Martin Short, along with many other actors. It was a terrible version that he did, but surprisingly enough, he did do the the, the most recent, but it came out in 2019, uh, version that's Italian. Um, I haven't seen that one, but I heard it's uh, even much better than his uh, disastrous version that he had. Um, it was released by Miramax uh, for the 2002 version. So this one is being released by another company. Uh, it should be available on streaming somewhere around. Um, I know there was a, a sequel to the live-action adaptation from 1996 uh, as told yes um i think martin lando reprised his role again as Gretel, and they just had a different actor playing the role yeah i, I believe it came out in 2000 or 1999 i, I gotta look it up I, I think i have that one too um yes there's also pinocchio's revenge um that horror movie yes there was a horror movie version of but, well, actually, it's a whole different film, but it's a terrible one, though. Oh, boy. And, you know, what's really funny, though, is that this year alone, we have free adaptations of Pinocchio. Um, aside from this one, we got the Pauly Shore version. Can you believe that? Pauly Shore uh, from MTV... 
comedian who had been in movies like Encino Man, as well as um, Son-in-Law in the Army Now, you know, Jury Duty, uh, Biodome, you name it, that's him. He was very obnoxious, but he can be funny. I know my father's not a big fan of him, that's fine. Uh, I don't mind Pauly Shore, but, I mean, come on, man. I just can't see him portray Pinocchio. So that's that's a train wreck, all right. Now it just makes this new movie look even better. <laughs> and you know it's it's too bad though because um, it does have some nice visual effects. It really does. You know I had high hopes for this because I I love how they really designed Pinocchio exactly how the 1940s version looks. Even Jiminy Cricket looks almost similar to the original. And all the rest and and stuff so that's what I was hoping for on the other hand though there is gonna be a brand new Pinocchio movie that's gonna be from director Ilomelo del Toro it's gonna be on Netflix and so far so good I saw a sneak peek that's going to be in stop motion animation, very similar to Laka, who, who gave us Coraline, as well as Cube on the Two Strains, um, Missing Link, uh, Paranorman, The Box Trolls, even Tim Burton's Corpse Bride come to mind. Yeah, I mean, it almost looks like this would have been done by Laka. So, wow. I'm I'm very impressed. Um, it's going to be released in selected theaters in some cities uh, in November, but it will be available on Netflix in December. So I can't wait to check this out. So there's there's high hopes for this one, and I think I'm going to be excited to see how this is going to turn out. This is how they're going to do Pinocchio right for a change. Um, <laughs> Anyway, now when it comes to Disney's live action remakes, I know we had like numerous uh, versions of all the previous films that, that Disney had that they put out in the 90s, especially the animated features. I mean, like The Jungle Book, 101 Dalmatians, which had a sequel. Um, I know The Jungle Book had Jason Scott Lee, Sam Neill. John Cleese, Lena Headley, and Carrie Elves. Uh, Wonder One Dalmatians had Glenn Close's Grill the Bill with Hugh Laurie, uh, Jeff Daniels, uh, Joey Richardson, and John Plowright. Um, and then um, we had uh, Cinderella, which is the Rogers and Hammersteins version, that had Whitney Houston as the fairy godmother with Brandy as Cinderella and they had a lot of diversity on that one but it, it was wonderful it even has Burnett Peters as the, the evil stepmother and um, there's Jason Alexander in the film too and other actors well and then Disney had did their live action remakes of the popular shows like My Favorite Martian and Inspector Gadget, and we all know how they all turn out. <laughs> yeah. But there's also The Parent Trap with Lindsay Lohan, who was a new actress at the time, uh, with um, Dennis Quaid and Natasha Richardson. And then we get, by the time the 2000s came along, I know we had Freaky Friday also with Lindsay Lohan with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and then she did Herbie's Fully Loaded uh, Michael Keaton's in the movie too, with uh, with Matt Dillon yeah and but of course going to the 2010s we had to get several uh, live action remakes some work others don't but that just depends on it. I mean, if you have to be optimistic about it. Because I did enjoy Cinderella, The Jungle Book. I even liked the 
Beauty and the Beast, I mean, despite of its issues, I, I know I had a controversy at the time. Um, Pete's Dragon, I don't think I've ever saw. I know. I'll check it out somehow. Um, I know there's uh, Maleficent uh, with Angelina Jolie uh, that was based on Sleeping Beauty. And they got a sequel, too. Um, then there's Aladdin, The Lion King. All turned out to be piss-poor remakes. Didn't work. Dumbo, uh, which was an underrated uh, remake from Tim Burton. Uh, I know there was Alice in Wonderland. He also did that, too. There was a sequel to that as well. Uh, Alice Through the Looking Glass wasn't a good one. But I did enjoy the first one. So, we, we, there's like so many that we're getting these days. I know people get tired of it. I understand. But sometimes, you know, I just got to have faith to see how this is going to, you know, be able to at least stay true to the source material and try to not mess things up. Or turn this into another cash grab. Because it's just amazing how they're making more money these days. And already we're getting the new Little Mermaid. Where they now have diversity as usual. Because I know Disney's doing a lot of diversity with these actors. And they, they just got um, a black actress to play um, Ariel. And that's becoming a controversy now. And, and then there's going to be a new Snow White movie and but we already have mirror mirror uh 10 years ago i love that one better but then i know there's another snow white uh, that came by with um, christian stewart and then they had a sequel and i'm like oh come on well ay 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 it's just so many of them these days but that's what disney wants to thrive and continue to go on with with more material you know to keep the the company alive but what can you do what can you do well now i'm already 22 minutes ahead i'm sorry i'm taking so long but i just have to keep talking some more so i can continue uh reviewing this train wreck what I was hoping this was going to be a great remake, but it's not. And it sucks because, you know, it does have a great cast and, and it has visual effects. But how on earth did this have to have such an inferior script? I just don't understand. Well, here goes nothing. It stars Tom Hanks, Benjamin Evan Ainsworth. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, yep, Keegan-Michael Key from Key and Peel, <laughs> and Mad TV, Lorraine Bracco, uh, he, she was from um, The Sopranos, she played the psychiatrist, but she's been in other films uh, before that, including Medicine Man with the late great Sean Connery, and she was in the movie with Michael Keaton called um, The Dream Team. Uh, among others that she's done in her career. Uh, Sophia Elvero, Luke Evans, Giuseppe Battiston, Cayenne Lamaya, Jaquita Tali, uh, Angus Wright, Sheila Atom, Luen Loyal, and Jamie Demetrio. And of course, we got Figaro the Cat, Cleo the Goldfish. And Monstro the Sea Monster. And as we all know, it's based on the 1940s version. A wonderful classic that you can't go wrong with. And it, which in turn is based on the Italian story by Carlardo Collati. It's written by Robert Semeckis along with Chris Rice. You know, who did the American Pie movies. Maybe that's where it went wrong. But he also did about a boy. But he is a talented writer too. But maybe he has his mistakes. And it's directed once again by Robert Zemeckis, as you may know, Back to the Future, Forrest Gump, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Death Becomes Her, 
uh, The Walk, Cast Away, but yeah, he did the bastardization of The Witches and What Lies Beneath. Mm, what can you do? And of course, you couldn't forget, uh, he gave us um, The Polar Express and A Christmas Story. Right there. With Jim Carrey. The movie begins set in a small Italian village in 1895. We meet a tiny, who's our narrator, by the way, <laughs> cheerful, intelligent, wisecracking, optimistic, and wise anthropomorphic cricket named simply Jiminy Cricket, who's voiced by Joseph Gordon Levitt. <laughs> Yeah, he sounds very slick, too. <laughs> okay, um, and I know, because at the beginning of the movie, you see the Disney logo uh, with the more familiar theme, you know, when you wish upon a star. And that's where you see <laughs> Jiminy Cricket telling the story where he begins to show his, uh, his younger side, uh, where he's just poor and a vagrant. And, well, he's trying to find a new place to stay so he doesn't get um, get cold and lonely. And that's where he enters the home of a widower, elderly woodcarver named Geppetto, who's played by Tom Hanks. Who lives alone with his pet kitten, Figaro, and his uh, beautiful goldfish, Cleo. Yeah, he does own his own novelty shop where... It, he sells all these cuckoo clocks that he just made, all of which, and you wouldn't believe this, because it does have cameo appearances of all of your favorite Disney um, classics, and I guarantee you they're going to pop up and you'll be able to see. Uh, it even features uh, Woody from Toy Story, because as we all know, Tom Hanks provided the voice of him. And it does have Snow White and the Seven Doors, Peter Pan, Dumbo, Sleeping Beauty, um, The Jungle Book. Uh, they even had um, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy, Chippendale, um, Pluto, and all the rest. I mean, if he had to, you know, pause it right away. Um, but it's almost like a blink, you'll miss it type scenes. <laughs> Just crazy. Um, he was about to close his shop because it's late at night. He was ready to fall asleep, but he just finished completing the work on a a wooden marionette uh, puppet of a young boy, which was based on his deceased son named Pinocchio. And it was designed exactly like the 1940s classic as we all know. So before he was ready to go to sleep, because unfortunately he had to close the shop, the customer came by, he wanted to have a cuckoo clock, but he refused to sell. And also, you know, he was testing out uh, Pinocchio since he was done, but literally scared the figure away. <laughs> but Cleo seems to love it. <laughs> anyway, He's about to wish upon a star, hoping that it will come true. And once he fell asleep, later that night, um, with Jiminy Cricket already <laughs> on the side, which I know he kind of bumped into another puppet, or perhaps <laughs> another cuckoo clock, uh, of a, a lady with a... Uh, <laughs> A huge bum. Um, the star magically brings Pinocchio back to life. Uh, almost a human, but not quite. But he was soon being visited by a blue fairy. And I know it's not uh, the blue fairy we know in the 1940s classic, no matter how you choose it, where she had very luscious uh, blonde hair, um, white skin and all. She has a wand and wings 
and a gown. Um, this time they just cast a, a black actress, um, which she looks almost prematurely bald, or perhaps fully bald, I don't know. It could be black hair, brunette, perhaps. Um, I, I can't even tell, but this is just such odd casting choices. Uh, she's played by Sifia Overo. Yes, she's wise, soft-spoken, and, and very sweet. Magical fairy. So, she soon makes a promise to tell him to act brave, truthful, and selfless, which is, at this rate, bravery, um, honesty, integrity, if that's the case and unselfishness in order for him to become a real boy. The Blue Fairy appoints uh, Jiminy to become his conscience so he'll be the one who's going to teach Pinocchio from right from right from wrong uh, to teach him right from wrong and I'll be able to learn everything that he needs to do and but as soon as uh, Geppetto woke up, he was deeply shocked at first, but then he somehow became overjoyed to find out that he came alive. So at that point on, um, they decided to just, you know, go around trying to teach Pinocchio to do everything we can. So throughout the next few days, you know, uh, try to not touch that or do this and, and just you know be able to learn how to use um, a knife fork and a spoon when you're gonna have dinner or lunch or breakfast whatever <clears throat> and also be able to pet the kitty you know, Figaro and, and be able to uh, to you know just uh, to greet to Cleo but just don't eat them or anything uh, it's crazy. So, after a few days of training, uh, Geppetto decided to send Pinocchio to school. Just gave him an apple and a book. But then uh, Jiminy overslept and got uh, bumped into a seagull named uh, Sophia, voiced by Lorraine Bracco. So that way he'll be able to follow uh, Pinocchio where he was already being bumped into uh, a con artist uh, fox named Honest John, voiced by Keegan-Michael Key, and he's joined in with his cat partner, very silent, named Gideon. Yeah, which, <sighs> there's this one scene I just can't believe they actually had the nerve to show that, was when he, when he dropped his apple, you know, just dancing around, walking across the village, you know, trying to get to it. Um, yeah, trying to get to school. He got near the horse feces. Yes, all that horse poop around. Like, I was afraid, yeah, with all these flies flying around, I was afraid he was going to end up accidentally picking up the poop instead of the apple. What the hell, Disney? Or Zemeckis, or Wise. Why? Why would you throw that in into the story? I wonder. Well, if that wasn't bad enough. Well, here's as we continue. Honest John and Gideon were ready to to actually said that maybe instead of taking him to school, yeah, he even took his apple. He should actually live a life of fame and fortune to become a real boy to actually uh, perform at a puppet feeder by a puppet master named Stromboli who's played by Giuseppe Battiston who was a very abusive greedy um, asshole and arrogant very pompous puppeteer who just who just basically forced him to, to perform on stage and enough to make more money and make him a star. More on that. <laughs> uh, 
But soon, um, Jiminy, who, who begins to finally found Pinocchio where he's at, with flying with Sophia, and just landed straight into Honest John before Gideon decided to take the mallet and knock them unconscious, and then knock himself unconscious, and both Pinocchio and Jiminy had escaped, ready to rush by, telling him that you shouldn't talk to strangers, you should go straight to school, and this is where... What in the name of the, of the Lord here? They actually kicked him out of school. Yeah, this te this stupid teacher with his students um, decided not to allow Pinocchio to to attend at school because he's a puppet. So if he becomes a human, he will be able to go to school. This never had happened in the live action version with Jonathan Taylor Thomas. You know, he got to be in school. This doesn't make any sense. And just by that, Honest John and Gideon have finally arrived and captured Pinocchio and take him directly to Stromboli. And that's when they trap um, Jiminy in a glass jar. And this is where he screams, Pinocchio! Don't go with them! No! What the? <laughs> this is crazy. So now, now performing at a puppet theater, she gets to, he actually gets to meet um, a young girl, very wonderful girl, who was a, a ballerina until she had an injury. Uh, her name is Fabina, and she's played by Kayan Lamaya. Now here's another great character that I, I, I know I wish Disney would have added <clears throat> in the original film, but it's nice to see a new character that's very kind <clears throat> and caring. It's just sad that she had to work with such a nasty uh, puppeteer, Stromboli. So at this rate, she's now a puppeteer, and she has a new puppet named Sabina, a very beautiful uh, ballerina. Um, so yeah, she, she has a wooden cast on her leg because of the injury. So hoping that she'll be able to earn her success, earn money and all. And maybe someday she'll be able to own her own puppet feeder and, and treat everyone nicely, including all the puppets. And then someday maybe Pinocchio will have a girlfriend of her. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, maybe Sabina might be, might turn into uh, a real girl. Yeah. Okay, so after um, Pinocchio's performance, you know, I got no strings. To hold me down. <laughs> you know that. Remember in the original film, as you know, yeah, where he had to perform with uh, all these Russian soldiers and all around, <laughs> and all the rest of the other pu puppets, yeah, even the ballerinas and all. So he became a success, but Stromboli trapped them in a cage, and they're ready to uh, head off to continue uh, for their next performance around the cities. <sighs> but yeah, and you know, remember that. No, no, yes, yes. And soon you're gonna be mine, forever. So he locked them up in the cage, put the key next to the door. And then uh, Fabina had came by, brought in Sabina. To cheer him up but he just felt all alone thought maybe he wouldn't trust her but but he told her told him the truth about who he really is and hoping that they will escape 
But then Jiminy, uh, already in the glass jar, I mean, he just spotted uh, Geppetto, who was just about to leave, because he found out that Pinocchio isn't home for dinner. So he left with uh, Cleo and Figaro, decided to take them along. Um, and unfortunately, um, he tried so hard that soon he'll be able to sell all of his cuckoo clocks enough for him to get a boat to continue his search. Yeah, I mean, so I had to search all night and, and day to find him. But Jiminy finally escaped um, after the coach uh, just uh, crashed the, the glass jar. Now he finally went straight into the cage where he's at. And now, in order for him to escape with Jiminy, which is kind of a shame they didn't use the Blue Fairy once again. And remember the scene in the 1940s version where he was about to tell Pinocchio why he didn't go to school? Well, he started to lie. And when he lies, his nose grew. Yes, it grows like a, grows like a stem or indeed a branch. And it creates a, a bird's nest. Yeah. And that's what's happening, yeah, because he lied. Well, instead of that, Jiminy decided to tell him to lie. His nose grew, so that way it could reach the, the keys so they can escape. And finally, they got out of there and hoping that they would go back home to where he belongs. Until he was swiped up by a coach full of children that's driven by a charismatic coachman. Uh, the coachman is played by Luke Evans, but he's the imposing owner of Pleasure Island, you know, a theme, a theme park for all the children around, pretty much, you know, getting away from their parents, acting like adults. Yeah, you know that scene that's in the original film, too, and which is also in the original story as well, come to mind, but you get the idea. Where Pinocchio eventually hangs around with an irresponsible boy named Lampwick. And he's uh, being played by Luan Loyal. Uh, Luan Lloyd, sorry. And yeah, they're just riding on, on the roller coaster. And that's where they get to spot like several other theme attractions. And other uh, restaurants and stuff. Um, there's even buildings and other places in the city. Well, this is going to insult your intelligence, but uh, there was like a there was like a food eating contest, you know, for competitive eaters that causes um, Pinocchio to almost vomit. Well, wow, how come he didn't vomit when he got near the horse species? And then they this is where they end up uh, going straight to the school where they end up uh, throwing a bunch of rocks and at the school and, and they're just trashing it can't believe it and then next thing you know there's a protest coming around yes a protest where all the kids were holding out picket signs which has all the words you know shut up um, no girls allowed you're an idiot all of that I, I can't believe that and of course they, they drink whoop, whoop beer and all that and, well, you probably already know that in the original film that um, Lentwick um, and Pinocchio were at, at the Bullard's uh, bar where they're just playing pool. And they were drinking beer and smoke a cigar. Well, it's quite different in this version because they want to come clean in a way. So it's actually root beer. Um... Well, that's when they started turning into donkeys because there was a magical dust that appeared. So this this was a trick. So now all the kids have became donkeys, and he became one too. Jiminy finally came to the rescue and about to escape right away from the coachman until they jump out of the cliff and they swim ashore, try to continue to find... Well, his father, Geppetto. 
Well, it turns out that, well, so Pinocchio had reunited with Fabina and Sabina, who tell them that Shaboli has been arrested uh, at the Carabinelli for the views of exploited employees around. Yes, he was very abusive, all right. And now they're taking over his puppet show, so that includes uh, Fabina and Sabina, so now he... She finally gets to treat the uh, employees just right. And hoping someday, you know, he'll be able to she'll be able to hire Pinocchio to perform. But they gotta be on their way to find Geppetto, which along with Figaro and Cleo, they uh, after all he just just sold all of his cuckoo clocks for a boat just for his search. So he pretty much lost everything in, in the process of his own home. Well, <laughs> this is one funny scene in the movie, but I, I know it's going to be plenty of details for him to explain. And he says at the end, you did it all in one day? <laughs> so now they've finally found Geppetto. Um, the way uh, Pinocchio speeds up, I mean, he speeds up like a speedboat. I mean, he just runs so fast. And then <laughs> and then all of a sudden they're being eaten alive by Monstro the Sea Monster, which is like a giant uh, whale. And they also found an, another boat uh, that had been eaten alive, that's been eaten before, but but it probably had a lot of dead, pi uh, dead uh, pilot pirates or any other so hope they're trying to find a way to escape from that the vicious sea monster by by actually putting out some smoke you know putting out the fire uh, with wood taking out all the pieces from that boat that's been destroyed and they finally you know got that out of there as soon as they can I mean Jiminy was all alone but hoping that <laughs> You know he'll soon be able to be be able to find them, and and now they finally escape. Uh, Pinocchio saved Geppetto's life, as well as Figaro and and uh, Cleo and Jiminy, of course. Well, he he got afraid because he felt like Geppetto was going to die, and that's where he he shed a tear. Which magically uh, landed on his face, and that's where he finally woke up, and everything was going great. So now they're going to head off to escape directly into the tunnel, which has this very similar ending to A Christmas Carol with Jim Carrey, where you, you know where Bob Critchett eventually, you know, breaks the fourth wall and and narrates about what happens at the end. Of uh, Ebenezer Scrooge. Well, they're doing the same thing, but with Jiminy Cricket, you know, breaking the fourth wall and and narrating at the end. And so, if you're expecting to see uh, Pinocchio um, becoming a real boy, you know, transforming, you only get to see him in a brief second. Why is that such necessary right there? I mean, they thought maybe they're going to do a sequel or something. It almost feels like a sequel bait ending. And I hope they don't do another sequel to this because this is just incredibly insulting. And it's such a shame too because Tom Hanks did a great job portraying the role of, of Geppetto. And so was um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt doing the voice of him, of Jiminy Cricket. And Pinocchio being voiced by Benjamin Evans Ainsworth. So there's a lot of special talents around here for the rest of the cast. Although sometimes um, there are actors who do sound pretty pale and sound pretty bland, um, bored, and doesn't have any feeling whatsoever. Like, why does everybody have to talk so stilted and so soft? I mean, I, I understand, but th that's just that's just not right. 
So the, the entire script is totally inferior, totally insulting. It just doesn't do the, the story any justice. And you know what's even worse is that they forgot to put in some other songs that they could have chose. That was from the 1940s original, like, like the song, Give a little whistle, ooh, give it a little whistle, ooh. Yeah, I can't believe they didn't put that song in the movie, and that's that's also a shame. And um, or or even the little wooden head, that was another song. So it seems like the only songs that they did chose was "Hi Diddly D" and "Actor's Life for Me," you know, by Honest John. <laughs> And I got no strings, and, and of course, when you wish upon a star, it's something wonder who you are, you know. Which I know that was the the most uh, famous theme of a mall, uh, which they also used the theme in the Disney logo. <laughs> I mean, it's the most popular theme they ever used. Uh and and. Um, Alan Silvestri, you know, uh, who was a recurring collaborator for Zemeckis' films, um, did a nice job with the score, but, oh boy, I mean, even with the visual effects that they've really done, I mean, they did a lot of great work on there that, damn, you know, I can't believe they, this whole thing was just a punch in the gut. I mean, there, there's like some bathroom humor in there, too. I mean, having to see the feces, as I mentioned already, or having to see some really weird, bizarre uh, imagery going around. And other characters are just are totally nasty. And the odd casting choice of the Blue Fairy. And all this other unnecessary uh, comedy that really went into the story. I mean, I, I understand because it's both, you know, it, it's nice to have comedy and jokes and stuff, but they have to like throw this, you know, all this, this cringe inducing type of stuff. I mean, I know I'm getting tired of the word, but still, uh, I mean, do we really need to see that? I mean, this movie's supposed to be about, you know, Brave, truthful, and selfness, but it seems like all of this is just a big, fat lie, enough to grow a whole stem out of your nose, and that sums it up. So, if you're gonna love this movie, be as you must, but. I say stick to the original 1940s classic because it's the best one we ever had. And if you ask me, I would rather watch the 1996 live action version with Jonathan Taylor Thomas and Martin Lando. Hell, even Pinocchio's Emperor of the Nights, the, <clears throat> the filmation version, which is supposed to set up like a sequel, yeah, the Emperor of the Night, is even better than this. I'm not kidding. But I guess I could say it is a little better than the Pauly Shore version, that's for sure. I mean, at least this has special effects. But, whatever. Because I know the animation in that film is just atrocious. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, man. I, I just really had high hopes for this one. I really do, coming from Semeca's, but it just seems like it's just another turkey after his abomination of the witches with Anne Hathaway instead of the the original classic that Nicholas Rowe directed with Angelica Houston. <sighs> what can you do? So anyway, that's Pinocchio, the... 2022, the second adaptation by far. And I give the movie one and a half star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later. For goodness sake, bye.